So the next clause we're going to look at is nine. Share my screen here. We've gone through five, six, seven, and eight. So we hit the plan clauses and the due clauses. Now we're talking about the check. So performance evaluation, monitoring and measurement, analysis and evaluation, internal audits and management review. Going over to the standard here, we see 9.1 is a general overarching blanket uh, or umbrella for monitoring and measurement, analysis and evaluation. Just a tip, typically in the standard, when we go and see these 4.1, the point ones, in most cases, the point ones are a almost a summary or a, 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 an umbrella for the subsequent clauses underneath that. So we see that here. The organization shall determine um, what needs to be monitored, measured, the methods of monitoring, measurement, analysis, and evaluation needed to ensure valid results, when the monitoring and measurement shall be perform and when the results for monitoring and measurement shall be analyzed and evaluated. So those are four components of really defining monitoring, measurement, analysis, and evaluation uh, within your own organization. A lot of times the customer will tell you, this is what I want, or the industry standard will, will force a certain amount of checks in process, checks at the end, uh, so on and so forth. So the organization shall evaluate the performance and effectiveness of the QMS. So that's a very broad, that's about as broad as you can get in terms of, okay, the system that we have focused on quality um, process output, um, how well is it performing? And typically that's something that's reviewed at a, at a higher level, a more macro level as frequently than let's say um, monitoring of production parts as they're flowing through an assembly line. The organization shall retain, so record, uh, shall keep a record uh, as evidence of, of those results. Customer satisfaction. So this is a subset, very general here, and then this is going okay, specific to the customer. The organization shall monitor the customer perceptions of the degree. So this is new. This is different. The degree to which their needs and expectations have been fulfilled. So not just a black or white did we do it or, or not do it did we make you happy or not but you know you see this a lot with you know five star rankings or uh, what degree what percentage um does the customer perceive and it's not um so think about this a lot of people get hung up on this um you know you're not going to go well we didn't get any complaints well the lack of complaints doesn't mean that the customer's happy you have to really get in and dig and, and understand the perception and the degree in, in which they're satisfied, basically. Um, the organization shall determine the methods for obtaining, monitoring, and reviewing this information. So this says it could be surveys, feedback on delivered products and services, meeting with a customer, meeting with, let's say, the end customer. Um, end customer might be four or five um, organizations away. So how do you get you know, to that? end of the value stream the directly to the end customer and find out how satisfied they are market share analysis complements warranty claims dealer reports so those are all sources and, and examples of sources analysis and evaluation the organization shall analyze and evaluate appropriate data and information arising from monitoring and measurement so appropriate data that, that's very vague you know you need to figure out okay if we're meeting our mark, if we're uh, going in the right direction, if our products are good at this stage, or services great with all of our uh, hotel guests, um, how do you know? How are you going to analyze that? Let you know. Let's sit back. You can you can collect a lot of data, but how do you look at that uh, data and information to um, help you understand your check process, that check piece of your business? And then, um, then that's when you really get into to, to clause ten is the take taking action um, 
on those things maybe that aren't are done so well. The result of analysis shall be evaluated. So a lot of times people, again, will have data, but they won't evaluate it. So evaluate the conformity. So what percentage, let's say, you know, in an, an example, what percentage is good versus bad or right the first time or um, how many five stars did we get? The degree of customer satisfaction. Um, what's the average of customer satisfaction, something like that. The performance and effectiveness of the QMS, again, very broad, but how do you come up with some sort of indicator um, to help you in analyzing your QMS to, to know whether or not it's performing effectively? Um, if planning has been implemented effectively, so you could have tons of plans to, to check certain parts or um, plans to... Uh, you know, get every new employee through onboarding within eight hours. Is that effective? Uh, the effectiveness of actions taken to address risk and opportunities. So not just, well, we had 20 um, corrective actions that we created internally and, you know, 15 of those have been closed out, but okay, that's, that's one thing, but how effective were those actions? Did we have repeat issues on things that were closed out? The performance of external providers, suppliers, et cetera, and then the need for uh, improvement of the QMS. That sums up 9.1. 9.2, we get into auditing. So you need to conduct internal audit at planned intervals. So typically this is like an annual plan, something like that, to provide information on whether the QMS is conforming to its own requirements your own requirements of the QMS internally and the requirements of this standard. And then the second piece is, is effectively implemented and maintained. Okay. Organization shall plan, establish, implement, and maintain an audit program, or you might have multiple audit programs, including the frequency, method, responsibilities, planning requirements, and reporting, of which shall take into consideration the importance of the the process is concerned. So lots of concerns with the process should be more frequent auditing. Uh, changes affecting the organization. So a lot of changes going on. You may be doing more frequent auditing. Um, things are looking good, no high risk. Everything seems to be okay. Um, let's see of auditing that particular area of your business. And then the other item is results of previous audits. So think about this. You know, you need to have an audit program that really is, um, I like to look at this as, as fair and balanced and calibrated or in sync with your real business performance. If you have a lot of, um, you know, a very uh, important process that's changing a lot and previous audit results were, um, were bad, then that's about as um, high of, that should be a, a higher frequency or the method should be deeper or, um, you know, you should be planning, uh, revisiting that area once a week or once a quarter um, based on what's appropriate for whatever the circumstances are there. You also need to define criteria and scope. So when you go out to do an audit, what's the scope? Well, I'm just going to audit uh, purchasing, that's it, at this one location. Okay, that's scope. Okay, well, what's the audit criteria? Well, I'm gonna audit them against their own procedures and I'm gonna audit them against requirements of 8.4 in the ISO 9001 standard. Okay, so that's your criteria and your scope. You need to select audits and conduct the audits to ensure objectivity and impartiality of the audit process. This is one that's really key um, a lot of people get tripped up here saying, well, I can't audit the areas where I work. And there needs to be a fair balance. You know, ultimately, the standard took out the requirement here that said um, auditors shall not audit their own area. And then it then it changed in 2008. That's what it used to say in 2000. 2008, it said auditors should not audit their own work. So it's went from area to, to work, and now that statement's been taken completely out. We want you to be able to um, assign audits to those folks that are technically competent and able to dig deep in a certain process. I mean, fresh set of eyes, yeah, that's really maybe 
objective and impartial, but not technically sound enough. So my solution for this and recommendation is you have two to three auditors um, that are going on and auditing something together. And one of those auditors at least uh, has that depth of knowledge to be able to get down and fulfill the purpose of doing the audit. You know, they can um, flip over rocks and understand what's beneath the rocks and really paint a good um, objective and fair picture of um, what they're seeing. If you don't have enough technical knowledge, you may not be able to really dig deep enough to have audit findings that are worth much. So you need to ensure that results are reported to relevant management, um, take appropriate correction, so short-term fix, and corrective action, so longer term root cause without undue delay. So timely action in response to the audit findings. And this is a record, uh, keeping a record of evidence of the audit program and the audit results. You'll also see here um, to 19,011. This is a guidance document that we see here. And this is a part of our um, upgrade to the lead auditor status. So if you're going through a 9001 auditor training and want to jump up to lead auditor, this going through this training program is how you would get from uh, auditor to lead, irrespective of whether it's 9001 or 14001 or 45001. But this is the third edition 2018 guidelines for auditing management systems. So you see that reference here. Nine three management review, top management shall review the organization's QMS at planned intervals similar to auditing to ensure its suitability adequately and effectiveness in alignment with this basic strategy of the organization. So inputs, so I look at this as, okay, these are the agenda items that the standard requires at a minimum that you um, as a leadership team, as a top management group um, and, and beyond. So that uh, review needs to look at the status of actions from previous reviews. So old business, anybody that's, any of you that's gone through um, a board meeting understands, you typically start with old business. So this is you know, what is the status from the previous meeting that we had or previous stand-up or previous annual meeting, whatever it is. Changes in external internal issues that are relevant to the QMS. So what's coming down the pipeline uh, that has changed or is going to change, hopefully more so getting ahead of, of a change so you could talk about it proactively uh, that might <clears throat> have a, an effect on the QMS information on the performance and effectiveness of the QMS, including, so these are items that need to be looked at in terms of analyzing how well the QMS is performing, customer satisfaction, feedback, of the extent the quality objectives have been met or not, process performance, conformity of products and services, non-conformities, corrective actions, monitoring measurement results, audit results, um, and performance of, of suppliers. Another here is the uh, real quick before we run away from this. This is typically a scorecard um, that organizations will have or KPIs on the performance of critical processes, external providers, um, customer scorecards. So this is a really kind of metrics heavy area of the standard. We also want to we also want to make sure that uh, we have adequate resources. We look at the effectiveness of actions taken to address risk and, risk and, and opportunities, and then any opportunity for improvement. Just one note here, this used to be, so D used to be down here, um, the adequacy of resources. Now it's an input. And the idea is um, if, if we're not performing a certain way or if there are changes coming down the pipeline, it makes sense to stop before a meeting is over and say, hey, look, do we have, ask the question, do we have adequate resources to achieve the desired result um, that we expect? And, and I like the fact that this is an input now rather than an output. So management review outputs. The outputs of management review shall include decisions 
in actions related to, and think about this, outputs. So I look at this as, okay, meeting adjourned. Now let's go on uh, and, and actually take action on what we met about. So thinking about this as action items or homework and the outputs shall include um, decisions and actions related to opportunities for improvement, any changes needed to the QMS and any resource needs. The organization shall retain documented information as evidence of the results of management review. Okay, so that's for clause nine. Ten, we get into improvement. The organization shall determine and select opportunities for improvement and implement any to meet customer requirements and enhance customer satisfaction. And these shall include improving the products or the services to meet requirements as well as future needs and expectations, correcting, so this is more uh, corrective, preventing and reducing undesired effect and then improving performance of the QMS. So getting into 10.2, we're really talking about um, a clause that's been combined that used to be um, used to be separated. It used to be control of non-conforming product, and then there was another clause for corrective action. These have been combined. So it's really saying when a non-conformity occurs, including customer complaints, then you need to react short-term, take action to control, maybe quarantine, and correct the immediate issue, and then deal with the consequences. It might be a recall. It might be um, exchanging bad product for good product and giving the customer um, a credit on their bill. And then the next piece is evaluate the need for action to eliminate the causes. So is this a big enough deal to say, look, this keeps happening, um, or it's very costly, and we need to then escalate this issue from, let's just say, an NCR, nonconformity report or customer complaint, to a full corrective action, problem-solving team, whatever. And the idea is to, that if it's significant enough to be escalated, um, you need to make sure that it doesn't recur or occur elsewhere in a similar, you know, the, the line next door or a sister plant or whatever. It's really significant enough to where you want to take a, um, a shot at a root cause analysis. So I would say um, in order uh, that it does not recur or occur elsewhere by reviewing and analyzing the nonconformity, determining the causes of the nonconformity, determining similar similar nonconformities ex exist elsewhere or potentially could occur. C is implement any action needed, review the effectiveness of those actions, then update risk and opportunities that uh, determine during planning if necessary. Um, so this might be re-ranking re or re-scoring uh, a risk or re-scoring re an opportunity if you're using something like an RPN or FMEA or a risk analysis tool, and then make changes to the QMS as necessary. Corrective action shall be appropriate to the effects of the non-conforming encounter. encounter. So similar to auditing, there needs to be a, some synchronization and harmonization between, you know, um, super important process uh, gets more attention for auditing. Super big issue, uh, non-conformity error, error, customer complaint, whatever, should should be uh, they met with an appropriate action that that's of that similar magnitude. The organization shall keep records as evidence of the nature of non-conformity and any action taken and the results of any corrective action. So typically that's a corrective action form or preventive action form or customer complaint or SCAR, or whatever. 10.3, this is the last subclause, uh, continual improvement. The organization shall continually improve the suitability, adequacy, and effectiveness of the QMS. This verbiage was there um, in the 14,001 and, and 18,001 um, OSAS standard before, now it's being brought over to the, the QMS 9001. But, you know, how do you go about at a very high level saying, our QMS is suitable, it's adequate, it's effective, um, and looking at, you know, where do we need to make improvements? The organization shall consider the results of analysis and evaluation and the outputs from management review to determine if there are any needs or opportunities should be addressed 
as a part of continual improvement. So picking your battles, really looking at, okay, how well are we performing? What do we want to do and put maybe in our strategy for next year in terms of spending, uh, capital improvements, uh, expansion, um, you know, lean activities, Kaizen events, so on and so forth. So it's really a broad statement, but that's your bookend to clause 10. If we go back over here and look at clause 10, we've just gone through that act piece. So that is the summary of clause nine and clause 10. Let's see one other bit just to show you is in the back here, Annex A um, is informative and it just gives clarification of new structure, new terminology and concepts. So you'll see some key changes between the new standards, why product and services is being used. Talk about instant interested parties what does that mean risk-based thinking it only happens to be uh, in the standard once in terms of in the requirements section um, but this goes through and gives you an understanding of what that means applicability documented information organizational knowledge and control of externally provided processed products and services and then annex b really talks about technical committee 176 what are the companion documents uh, to 9001? And you'll see 9000 and 9004. These are kind of the three core standards. And then you'll see a bunch of other standards here that the committee is also responsible for that um, is pertinent to quality management systems and improving their processes and activities. There's a table under here that also shows um, these are all the standards and here are sections uh, within the 9,000 standard that, that meets up um, with those, those other standards from TC-176 in the bibliography here. So that's it for Clause 9 and 10.